name is Toby Oridan. Um, I'm from London and I'm a writer and I guess entrepreneur and public speaker. Um, I write around issues of race, feminism, pop culture, beauty politics. I freelance for people like The Stylist, uh, Debrief, BuzzFeed, Elle, all that good stuff. But in 2014, I launched my own platform called Black Ballad. It's a web lifestyle website that seeks to tell the human experience through the eyes of black British women. I'm going to be talking about how the beauty industry has devalued the physical worth of black women and how multiple industries need to come together in terms of seeking diverse employment to make sure black women feel as beautiful as their white counterparts. In terms of young talent, creative talent, the appropriate place for you is your own space and I think that's a great thing about blogs and you know um, WordPress accounts and you know there's so many platforms where you can do your own stuff so you don't have to be defined by what someone else's vision is. Um, I think social media has proved a great space for creatives to connect and build together. Um, that's the whole point of Synergy. So I think if you want an appropriate space, make one yourself and collaborate with others. As a child, I would love to watch my mother put on her makeup. I'd be in awe as she put on her Elizabeth Island foundation. I'd watch her put on her silvery blue eyeshadow. And my favorite part of my mother's makeup routine, she perfectly applies her red lipstick without looking in the mirror. <laughs> Many Saturdays were spent in London's Oxford Street, where she would look for products to add to her robust makeup collection. She would walk into these department stores, up to these beauty counters, and she would be treated like a queen. Meanwhile, I was the annoying daughter that was told, don't touch that, don't touch that, Tope, don't touch that. And I would touch every product in my sight, and I even thought I was being helpful by taking off the lids of lipstick testers. <clears throat> With every purchase of makeup, my mother felt visible. With every purchase of makeup, my mother felt empowered. So when I wanted to buy makeup for the first time, I thought if we went to the same department stores, the same beauty counters, we'd have the exact same experience. I thought that women with immaculate hair and makeup that smelt sweeter than candy floss would convince me to buy the products that I needed and convince me to buy the products that I didn't need. <laughs> However, I quickly learned that my mother's, mine and my mother's makeup relationship with makeup would be completely different. Why? Because I'm black and she's white. You see, the beauty industry devalues black women by not making products for our complexion and our needs. A makeup brand will make 50 shades of beige, but it's light years before it makes a single shade of brown. And I think this reflects how, how women are treated in society depending on their race. You see, white women, they're visible individuals that look different to the world. Black women, like that token brown foundation, we're seen as one, and that visible one She's always a woman of a light skin tone, a woman that has visible white ancestry. <laughs> Before the days you could fast forward through adverts, I used to love beauty commercials. Maybe it's Maybelline, get the London look, and the iconic, because I'm worth it. I would watch beautiful white women swish their silky straight hair from side to side. And by watching white women be the only face of beauty, I unconsciously internalized that white women were the only women worthy to be deep to be deemed beautiful. I'm not here to dispute the beauty of white women, but what I am here to say is that black women, women of color, are just as be beautiful, light or dark, and the beauty industry needs to wake up and realize that. However, what makes the beauty industry so powerful in devaluing the worth of black women is it does not work alone. The media industry for so long have used beauty politics to lessen the worth of black women. Think about it. When the mainstream presents hairstyles, such as the braids I have, the afro someone in this audience has got, <laughs> cornrows or bantu knots, they're presented in a way that erases black women. In 2015, a magazine told, uh, told its audience, you can have an afro too. Underneath, a picture of a white woman sporting the tightest brunette curls. 2016, the hot hair trend, the boxer braid. The women that were celebrated and credited as the pioneers of this hairstyle, the Kardashians. And in the process, black women's intrinsic link to this hairstyle was wiped away. This erasure, this cultural erasure happens because black womanhood is about being consumed. To the mainstream media, black femininity is nothing but a tool that benefits the style and lifestyle of white women. How can black beauty, black female beauty, be, made, be sold in a way for profit? However, 
black, black beauty politics has had the most lethal effect on black women within the workplace. For women, year after year, because of the hairstyle they choose, whether it be braids or an afro, sometimes have to change their appearance or, in some cases, lose their jobs. It's interesting. Black men, maybe they have a low, low haircut, but it's afro texture. Some wear beards to the office. Some have a, like a large afro. But never are they told they're unprofessional. Black women, our look is unprofessional. It highlights how beauty politics perpetuates a unique discrimination of racism and sexism that only targets black women, known as misogyny in the world. Now, when I was a teenager, I hate looking in the mirror. <laughs> I didn't even like taking photographs because I knew looking back at me wasn't society's standard of beauty. I knew looking back at me wasn't the girl in the Cosmo Girl advertorials. And I knew looking back at me definitely wasn't the girl in the high street or high-end beauty campaigns. I stand here and I firmly say the beauty industry needs to take responsibility in making black women feel physically beautiful, have self-esteem and empower us like it does white women. Now, I stand here and I'm not deluded. The beauty industry alone can't convince the world that diverse representation is a necessity and not a want. And I also know the beauty industry alone cannot convince the world that black women are the standard bearers of beauty, like their white counterparts. However, the beauty industry has a, has a responsibility to kick off that change. And to me, that change starts with a diverse, diverse workforce. In senior, black women must be hired in senior positions. The beauty industry must actively recruit for scientists of color so more products work across a wider spectrum of skin tones. The media industry has a responsibility to also make this change with a diverse workforce. The British journalism industry do you know that black journalists only make up 0.2% of the British journalism industry? We make up 3% of the population. Now, when you think of news, of course, current affairs comes first and is a priority. The reality is that journalism extends to lifestyle issues, and these issues, they include beauty. The newspaper you love and the newspaper you love to hate, they have a beauty section, they have beauty news. The woman's magazine you flick through in Tesco's, the one you buy on a weekly or monthly basis, they have beauty columnists. They have beauty editors. The woman's website you click on every morning before you go to work, again, they have beauty columnists and they have beauty editors. When will the journalism industry start to wake up to the fact that black women must be employed in some of these positions? The final industry that needs to work on diverse representation, advertising companies. Advertising companies have responsibility to make sure that black women fill senior positions. I think if all three companies prioritise diversity, we'll see more adverts like this. I think if all three companies come together and make diverse representation a priority, especially at senior level, we'll see less adverts like this. When we look at adverts like this and see that this is no longer a reflection of our society, our society is growing, it's a growing multicultural society, now, you may say, what can I do? If any of you work in a creative industry, you have a responsibility to look around your office and ask who's making the decisions. If any of you work in an industry that changes, makes, and breaks stereotypes, you have a responsibility to look around your office and see who's at the top. And even if you don't work in a creative industry, every time you see an advert like that, you should call it out. You should say, why are only white women or white women or women that have a proximity to whiteness the only ones that are worth celebrating? I stand here as a testimony of what happens when you let black women make decisions at senior level. I work on a project called Black Ballad. It's a lifestyle website, and our responsibility is to hold black women to a standard of beauty. Now, when we started this venture, I underestimated what it would do to the self-esteem of black women. There is a website that reflects black women as the spectrum of black women from light to dark in a way that is authentic and not tokenistic. We write beauty content where black women read, nod in agreement, disagree and laugh because again, there's content that is written in an authentic manner and not tokenistic. Now, you may say, what more do I want? I'm working on a website, I'm working to change the image of beauty. You may say, what more do I want? Lupita Nyango, Chimada Adichie. They're both black women with full lips like mine, broad noses like mine, who are the faces of global beauty campaigns. But wait, two black women that look like me are the faces of global beauty campaigns. 
How many white women can you name on the faces of global beauty campaigns in comparison? You may even say, what more do I want? I'm obviously wearing makeup and I'm wearing a full shebang. <laughs> but at 27, it's true. Shopping with my mother in beauty departments has gotten easier. But the truth is, every single beauty counter we walk up to, she's confident she can buy a foundation. She's confident she'll see herself in the imagery. I don't have that confidence. And I think it's everybody's responsibility to make sure black women are seen as beautiful. Thank you.